Well, hey, everybody. We're back. We're back to our Waves notes. Now, I uh, got a little bit of feedback from the first seven pages. It was a little heavy, I heard. A little heavy on the uh, ears and on the hands. So I'm going to try to lighten it up a bit. Uh, one of the reasons the first part of this unit is uh, somewhat traditional in approach is because even if you don't go into physics, uh, it's good to know these words. Uh, pulse, periodic, transverse, longitudinal. They show up in a lot of fields in places that you would not expect. They show up in psychology. They show up all over the place. So these uh, we're going to get on to these wave characteristics. We're actually going to start on page 7 of the notes where we left off, down to how do we describe periodic waves. And uh, I'm going to try to go through it faster. And one of the differences you'll see here, well, for right now, grind through some of these words because these words do show up. And these words do matter in many fields. So uh, knowing what they mean. Wave words are not like uh, English words. The beauty of English is that, um, is that basically you can take a word and give it multiple meanings. But um, here, the meanings of these words in waves and physics, they're very precise. And that's part of the reason that we can connect scientists or people dealing with science all around the world. is Because a word has a very particular meaning. It's not really open to interpretation unless you get into the philosophical side of physics. And uh, some of you may turn out to be a little nutty like that. Talk to me if you ever have that interest. It's uh, wild stuff. Anyway, um, back to this. One of the differences you'll see is some parts I'll mention, you know, you should have an idea of what this is. And then I'll say, well, if you're going into AP, you definitely need to know what this is. In fact, let me put a blanket statement out there. If you're going into AP, all of this stuff matters. The details all matter. If you're going into some science in college or anything that could be somehow science related or have a science prereq, physics prereq is much more common than you think. Um, then all of this does matter. If this is really not going to be your path in any way, shape, or form, then get the essence of it. Get the idea of what words like amplitude and frequency and period mean. And I won't really push you too hard on the mathematics of it. And so you'll see the assignments that come with this will actually be truly differentiated. And you will differentiate by your interest. And, uh, you know, hopefully you're honest with yourself in deciding what will matter for you later on and maybe what not so much matters. And it goes both ways. If you may be science-oriented or any sort of math-related oriented, and there is a lot of math in the world, push yourself a little more on the math side. If you know you're going another way, then don't beat yourself up doing math and doing intensive uh, diving into details that maybe won't affect you and will just end up stressing you. So I know this is not nothing. This is real work. This is new material. This is much better when we're face-to-face -face and we can interact uh, live and really figure out what's good, bad, and in between. But, hey, we're doing the best we can, and, uh, you know, you're, you're working hard, and I see that, and I appreciate that. And I, I think it helps us keep a little bit of sanity during this crazy time and helps us keep a little bit of purpose and intent when uh, we grab hold of what we got and just keep doing it. All right, so let's go. How do we describe periodic waves? Over here, if anybody knows who this is, you send me a little message. I'll give you an extra credit. I'm not telling you who it is. But anyway, this is a character. Multiple pieces came together and made this fearsome not Power Ranger. Oh, Power Rangers are so soft compared to this guy. Anyway. So we're going to talk about periodic waves. Periodic, remember, is regularly repeating. So when you have a wave that regularly repeats, it has certain properties or characteristics. Like when a person walks in the room, you can describe them. Height, hair color, eye color, arm length, weight, all these different characteristics you can use to describe them, even if they just stand there. When you look at a wave, even if it's not really doing anything, okay, here's a wave, we'll take a snapshot of it. There are a number of things that we can describe about it. Big six, here they are, amplitude, frequency, period, wavelength, phase, and wave speed. A few of these actually have symbols in your PRT on page five. Frequency goes by that lowercase or minuscule italicized F. Period is capital T. If you remember, I told you way back when, capital T and minuscule T are not the same thing. Period is a special type of time. Wavelength is your lambda. There it is, kind of an upside down Y. Phase and wave speed. Speed, of course, is the same old V. Amplitude and phase, we don't have symbols in our reference table, which means you're not going to see equations for them in this course. There are equations later on. All right, big idea right here. Yeah, I love this quote, and uh, 
maybe later on you come back to it and you realize how much oomph it really has. Forrest Gump would say, a wave is as a wave does. What that means, anything that can be described with these six wave characteristics is a wave. Now, at first, we'll look at things like ropes. You see a wave, a slinky, you see a wave, water, you see a wave. Okay, it's very easy to see that's a wave. But in the end, when we get to modern physics and you can't see the waves, yet we call them waves, well, how can you justify that claim? Well, a wave is as a wave does. Thank you, Forrest. Basically, if you could somehow quantify these physical quantities about the wave, or about the thing that you're not sure if it's a wave. Well, wait a minute. It's got amplitude, frequency, period, wavelength, phase, wave speed. Well, it's a wave. And so that will be a very useful functional definition of a wave for later on. For right now, boom, let's do amplitude. Now, there's going to be a little video helper, a little application of amplitude. I'm learning about cards and all this fancy stuff in YouTube. So over here in the top right, you'll see a little eye pop up. And uh, when it does, uh, you can click on that and get a little visual of what this amplitude stuff really means. Right now, let's go quickly through it. Amplitude is the maximum displacement either way from the equilibrium or balance position. All right, so real quick, it's a distance or a displacement rather. So the unit is meter typically that we work with. So where is the displacement? Here it is. We have the y-axis is showing that displacement. So there are no numbers on here, but I could put numbers on here. So this maybe would be one, and this would be two, and so on. And then down here, you'd have your negative 1, you'd have your negative 2, and so on. And this is in units of meters, so these numbers, they all have units, they're all magnitudes. Cool. So when comparing two waves, which has the greater amplitude, basically the taller one. You see it there. Uh, the amplitude here, when it comes to measuring it, the amplitude would be for the solid line, the solid wave would be from C to B, or from F to E. That would be the amplitude of this solid wave. The dotted wave would be from C to H or from F to K. That's all. That's your amplitude. Be careful. Mr. Weissman warned me once that uh, their psych textbook, one of the editions, actually had this wrong. They said the amplitude was from B all the way down to E. That's not the amplitude. The amplitude is from the equilibrium to either the crest or to the trough or to the max or to the min, not both together. So you can get caught with a slippery question like that, where they tell you this is negative 3, this is positive 3. They tell you it's 6 meters from here to here. What's the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is not 6 meters. The amplitude is 3 meters. Okay. So let's go over here. These are pretty straightforward. I'm going to try to keep this quick. Let's go on to the next page. When comparing two waves of the same frequency and different amplitude, which one transmits more energy per wave? Well, you'll see from that video, higher amplitude equals, let's come over here, a higher amplitude wave, it's a taller wave, go to the beach, you get hit with a taller wave, you'll see, higher amplitude delivers more energy per wave, that's all. You know, you can think of that as a kinetic energy, it'll throw you over, and this is beyond our course, but energy is related to amplitude squared. So as amplitude goes up, energy actually goes up at a power graph, something like this. Uh, that end is a little too curvy. Okay, cool. All right, a couple things to memorize. It says memorize, that means memorize. All right, you'll see this on the spring in that little video I told you about. But for a light wave, the two main types of wave that we'll spend our time talking about are light and sound. Your design to receive light and sound tells you almost everything about the world. So you look with your eyes, you hear with your ears. Anyway, really with your brain, but let's go over here. So the light wave, what does it mean? What does amplitude mean for a light wave? Amplitude is, of course, intensity is just another word for amplitude. Amplitude, intensity, same thing, but it is the brightness. So check this out. Lower amplitude, light, higher amplitude. Lower amplitude, higher amplitude. If you have a dimmer switch over your dining room table or something like that, well, you're actually changing the amplitude of the light when you operate it. So next time you want somebody to turn the lights down a bit, you want them to shut the lights in the room, tell, hey, turn the amplitude of the light down in here, would you? All right. Sound waves, amplitude is also intensity. However, that is volume. So lower amplitude, sound, 
Higher amplitude sound. Higher amplitude sound. Higher amplitude sound. I changed my note. That part doesn't matter. What matters here is that the volume has changed. More volume, more amplitude for sound. In fact, more volume, if you stand in front of a uh, speaker at a concert or a fair or something, those big speakers that really shake the place or the, hopefully you have a prom, something like that, um, stand in front of that speaker, you can feel it. Higher amplitude sound most certainly delivers more energy. This is an important memorization right here. Amplitude determines the energy of a sound wave. There's a subtle point here, this footnote too. For those of you who really want to you know, know about physics, go read that footnote down here. Check it out. Come back to me. All right, you can ask me about it. So these right here, this memorize business, memorize. All right, cool. Frequency, next one. There's going to be a little eye that pops up here in the top right. That eye is going to show you some frequency live. So frequency, there's your italicized minuscule f oscillations per time rate of vibrations okay listen there's a three-word definition it is cycles per time that's what you should remember cycles per time the way you write cycles per time is really just cycles per means divide time truly this is your best definition that you can have for frequency because it tells you what it is and it also tells you how to calculate it Frequency is cycles per time. That's what it is. Okay, note, the frequency of the source determines the frequency of the waves. We talked about this yesterday a bit. Basically, what that's saying is uh, the faster something shakes, the faster it makes new waves. We saw that when we actually were running the waves in that little applet over there. With the Maybe I still have it over here. Is that it? There it was. Yeah. Boom, here we go. Higher frequency, this one is 1.49, whatever that number is there, we'll tell you in a minute. But if I put my mouse a new one, it is now, 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 now. If I bring that frequency down to like 0.62, now, now, now. So the frequency of the source, how quickly this thing wiggles back and forth, determines the frequency of the waves, how quickly a new wave is made. All right, the unit for frequency is cycle per second. That's one way to write it. Per second is actually legal, which can be written just slash s or s to the minus first. s to the minus first is a little more uh, common. And finally, hertz, the most common of all. Hertz, <coughs> capital HZ, named after somebody. Do the little extra credit if you want. To calculate frequency, total cycles over total time or one cycle over the time for one. Really, it's this. Take your cycles, divide by time, done. Whoa! What's a cycle? A cycle is just one complete wave. It begins and ends at the same position. So this over here, there's one cycle. Starts here, goes up, passes the middle, down, back to the middle. You may say, wait a minute, what about here in the middle? No, it's got to do a complete wave. It's got to do an up, a down, and back to the middle. This one is three cycles. So it starts here. There's one. There's two. There's three. By the way, from if we were to start instead, let's say here, you'd have to get back to that same position. So down, back up to the top, there's one cycle. Down, back to the top, there's two cycles. So no matter where you start, you have to complete a full wave. That's a cycle. That's all it is. All right, let's keep going over here. Wave diagram. Mark off each cycle for each wave. Just a quick look. This actually is useful for everybody. You should be able to look at a diagram. And this one's a little messy. It's got three waves laid on top of each other. But you should be able to identify how many cycles you see. So how many cycles are shown for each? The solid wave, you notice here's up, down, there's one. Up, down, there's two. The solid cycle has two waves. The dashed cycle. Let's see here. Dashed is this little one. Up, down, there's one. Up, down, there's two. Up, down, there's three. Up, down, there's four. It's got four. Now, the amplitude, the height of the solid and the dashed are different. Solid has a bigger amplitude than dashed. But that's not what we're asking about. We're asking about the frequency. Dot dash is this one in between. Dot dash starts here. Up, down. Dot dash only has one. All right, important to recognize. Let's go back to that three-word definition. Frequency is, you know, if there really is one thing to memorize mathematically about frequency, it's this. Cycles per time. The only way you can get cycles per time off a graph, and especially going into AP, be careful with this. 
The um, only way to get frequency off a graph is it has to be a displacement. They always had displacement, which is the amplitude, versus time. Sometimes these graphs are versus distance. This one is versus time, though. That's the only way you're going to get frequency directly from this graph. It has to be versus time. All right, cool. There it is. So rank the waves in order of increasing frequency. So frequency is cycles per time. You can take this entire time to be our time t. Well, the solid one has, as this comes out here, the solid one has two cycles per time. Sorry, it's a little hard to write. The dashed has four cycles per time. And that's per the total time here. The dot dashed has only one cycle per time. One cycle per ugh, time. Give my whatever marker writing this is. So if we were to rank these in order, of course, the increasing frequency, you've got to start with the lowest. This would be first, this would be second, and this would be third. The dot, da sorry, the dashed has the highest frequency. When comparing two waves, which has a greater frequency? Well, look at it. It looks more bunched up. You see more waves in the set amount of time. It looks more squished together. All right. Um, another little example of this here. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. E Honda with that uh, thousand hand slap. Watch him. Watch him. Boom. Hit you with that. You're done. One more. One more. Give us one more. Boom. That's high frequency right there. High frequency, high energy. So we're comparing two waves of the same amplitude now. So if it's light, it's the same brightness. If it's sound, it's the same loudness. But do they transmit the same energy no matter what? Answer is no. Answer here is higher frequency equals, come on over here, more energy per time. Higher frequency is more energy per time. So uh, there's something a little tricky about that, too, this footnote 3, which come down here, those of you who like footnote 2, check out footnote 3, get you thinking a bit. Not something you'll see in a standard Regents course. You've got to think about that a bit. All right, and you'll understand that actually better as you learn more about waves. So energy versus frequency, there actually is a relationship to this in your reference table. Here it is. Boom. E photon equals HF. Well, that's really for light, but basically energy and frequency are directly related so increase the frequency you increase the energy same thing here higher frequency more energy per time we'll worry about this graph really more later all right memorize boom here we go frequency of light is the color frequency of light shows up as its color um, you can actually see that over here reference table page two and if we Zoom in a little bit. Check this out down here. It's an easy way to remember this. Here are frequencies. The frequency scale is written down here. It starts low on the right, gets bigger on the left, so it runs right to left, getting bigger. In this little sliver, this light gray sliver, you get visible light. And so among the visible lights, notice red occupies. They're all 10 to the 14th hertz, but red is in the high 3s to high 4s range. Orange is in the high 4s to low 5s range. Yellow is in the low five to almost five to low fives. Green is low fives to low six. Blue is low six to mid high six. Violet then you see up to the higher sevens. What does that mean? Light comes with different frequencies. And for right now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything to you. You can't really picture that. You can try to imagine that more wiggles, but that's not quite right when it comes to light. Anyway, when it hits you in the eye, that light interacts with your retinal cells and creates a nerve impulse. We'll talk about that more later too. But anyway, your body is set up so that if the light is of different frequencies, you end up perceiving different colors. So these colors we perceive, of course, there's a range of reds. You, you have probably three different reds in the room around you. So uh, different shades of red up to orange, shades up to yellow, green, the whole uh, rainbow over there. Anyway, so the frequency of light determines its color and the frequency determines the energy of a light wave. So actually, again, I gave you this on the 8-0, but if you look at here, 
Photon just means light. We'll worry about that more later. But frequency up here, y equals 1 times x. This is a direct graph. More frequency, more energy. But you also know this from your phones. Uh, there's something called night shift on your phone. And one of the things you've probably heard about with the phones is the blue light or the new uh, screens, the new TVs, the tablets. Don't watch it at night because the blue light keeps you awake. It actually does deliver more energy. Blue light is over here is higher frequency, delivers more energy. Red is lower. If you go back to the night shift, if I, I keep my phone on night shift all the time. And when you take it off night shift, the screen looks very blue, white and blue. And you have it on, the screen looks redder. It's actually lower frequency. And my hope is that lower frequency, lower energy, it actually does use less battery life. So the battery should last a little longer. Sound wave frequency is associated with, some of you know this already, do, 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 pitch. Pitch, it's the note. Here's a little frequency game. Boom, online tone generator. This is kind of fun. There it is. Here's your frequency. Now watch as I slide this bar up. First off, this one over here, this is amplitude. High amplitude, that's volume of sound, low amplitude. If you have your volume up, you'll notice that this is more uncomfortable to your head and your ears than this. Well, frequency with sound, when you go up, you go up in note. Oh, there it goes. Now, you'll notice, interestingly, let me turn this way down in amplitude. You'll notice, interestingly, that certain frequencies seem to be louder than others. That doesn't mean that the computer is actually playing them differently. It actually means that your ears, your head, parts of your body fit that frequency. The word is resonate with that frequency better. And so you actually perceive them louder. We'll talk about resonance later. It's a pretty cool thing. But anyway, as you go up in frequency, oh, yeah. Oh, that's good times right here. Notice that higher frequency delivers more energy over time, but not per cycle. So you could perceive pain from this. Oh, here it goes. Now, there comes a point where you're just not going to hear this anymore. There's a couple reasons for that. One, the amplitude may be too low. But if we get the amplitude way up, woo, you also have speakers or you have headphones on. And they're only designed, turn that down, they're only designed to deliver sound really at the frequencies that human can hear and that sounds are made. So sounds that humans make are made. So there's no sense in having speakers that play way above the frequency range that we hear because we wouldn't hear it anyway. Dogs might hear it. They may be upset by it. But anyway, let's play a little game. Let's start out where I can't hear it anymore. Let's go to 14,000 hertz about. I'll click this here. 14,000. So you'll let me know whether you can hear these things. Can you hear it? All right, let's go to 15,000. Let me turn up that amplitude. Now, you might get other tones in there. Those tones are wrong. You might get lower notes. You'll hear them in there because the speakers are having issues. It's the high note. Maybe you hear it, maybe not. Let's try 16,000. Anybody? Can you hear it? Now, if you go higher, I hear some other notes, some undertones in there that are not the note. That's not the high note we're talking about. Anybody hear 17? I hear a low note, but not the high note. 18? 19? It's fun to do in class. Woo! Stop that nonsense. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's go over here. Here's a little thing. Red, blue. Now, the brightness here, the amplitude is different, but red is low frequency, blue is high frequency. Cool. Next. All right, period. The last one we're going to talk about in this video right now is period. Period goes by capital T. It's the time to complete one oscillation. And the three-word definition, time per cycle. Oh, if you're going to remember anything about period mathematically, I still feel like I'm hearing that high note. Period is time per cycle. Notice that's the inverse of frequency. Period is always a time. A class period, 40 minutes. Uh, the period of a, of a, what do you call it there? Uh, why am I forgetting? A pendulum could be one second. It's always a time. Any period you think of, it's given as a time. So uh, that helps you remember time on top, cycles on the bottom, because it's a time you're looking for. 
All right, the unit for period, since it's a time, the unit is seconds. And sometimes it's second per cycle. That could be one that catches people. Four answer choices written in seconds per cycle. And people are like, wait a minute, it's supposed to be a time. Why is a cycle there? Technically, a period is a time per cycle, not just the time. To calculate period, yeah, 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 the same business we wrote before. This is what you need. Take the time, take the cycles, divide the two. That's it. All right, mark off a period for each. Well, period notice is time per cycle, which means you need time on the x-axis. Remember, the displacement here is for amplitude on the y-axis, and so we're good to go. If we want to get period, we're good to go. You'll see why I keep bringing this up when we get the wavelength. So how many periods are shown here? Well, it's the same thing as cycles as we just did before. So the solid notice, one, two, there were two. I think I did blue last time. And the dash, there were four waves. It's four periods shown here. And the dot dashed, wow. The dot dashed, there was, that's a four. Dot dashed is one. All right, rank the waves in order of increasing periods. Since period is time per cycle, you now have to do time per cycle, which is, in this case, the blue one. The solid is the total amount of time we have there divided by two cycles. Dashed was the total amount of time there divided by four cycles. The unit down here on the bottom is cycles. Cycles. Sorry, I'm making this one red. And the last one, the big wave. Actually, the stretched out wave is the total amount of time up there divided by one cycle. In this case, notice the order reverses. If we're going to put these in increasing order, the smallest period is this one. That was the biggest frequency. Then the second, and then the third, which is the biggest period, is the one that's the most stretched out. So when comparing two waves, which has the greatest period? Well, the one that's more stretched out. You can see that. Fewer waves, fewer cycles. And uh, which transmits over more energy over time? So don't be fooled here. When everything's the same about the waves except for the period, it is the smaller or lower period equals more energy per time. This is weird to think for whatever reason, you know, smaller equals more. So my recommendation, honestly, is just think of period as reverse or really inverse frequency. That's all. Whatever frequency does, period does the other way. Energy versus period, well, we saw energy goes up with frequency, so energy goes down with period. In fact, the graph is an inverse graph, Yep, something like this. Good. Now, what's the relationship between period and frequency? It's written on period PRT5. You might as well get used to that. PRT5, where are you at? There you at. Period is 1 over frequency. There it is. They're inversely related. No matter what, this is always true. We'll get to refraction later on, which some of you will spend a lot of time quantifying. Some of you will just get the rough idea, which is fine, too. Period is 1 over frequency. The two of these are always inversely related. More frequency, less period. Less frequency, more period. If frequency stays the same, period stays the same. Period stays the same, frequency stays the same. Get in the picture? Hope so. Anyway, T equals, let's write this one out. This is like our old style. T equals 1 over F. And t equals 1 over f, so then we can need to make this. This is our y-axis. This is our x-axis. And so when you plug and chug over here, this actually becomes y equals 1 over x. And if you have a graphing calculator, pop it in. Your brain might already know it. If you don't have a calculator, go on your computer. Go to Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S dot -S com. They have a fantastic uh, graphing calculator program you could do all you could program things in there it's great anyway period inverse color inverse pitch listen don't uh, you see there's no memorize up here don't worry about memorizing this business here um, i think i mentioned it before but just in case i didn't a little i dot popped up in the beginning go watch the live period business but uh yeah don't bother memorizing all this business about period just remember that it is really reverse or inverse or opposite of frequency that's the way you remember period no, no need to memorize all that. Okay, now we're going to do a little graphing right here. This is the piece where we're going to separate into groups. Uh, I actually think this is a great skill for everyone. 
However, I'm not going to really force everyone to quantify this. I recommend you do it, but I'm not going to force everyone to quantify it because uh, if you can get a sense of what we've done so far, amplitude, frequency, and period, then that's really all you need for some of you. Of course, going on to AP, maybe doing something scientific, anything like that, you should do this. This is actually a nice exercise, and it's not unlike what you've done in math. All right, so five steps to sketching a graph, a.k.a. dodge, duck, dip, dive, dodge. The five D's of graphing. I wish I could show you that video clip right now, but I'm going to hit with that copyright, and then you won't be able to watch any of this. Boo hoo. Okay, so what do we do? Get your givens on point. Here we go. Now, by the way, there are two. Look at this. Isn't that nice? I kind of like that. So anyway, two QR codes. This is a step-by-step -step PDF of how to do this whole thing. This is a YouTube video. In fact, I have the video right here. A whole 50 views. That's hot. Anyway, uh, a whole YouTube of exactly how to do this. Uh, you can pick your poison, and I'm going to show it to you right here. There will also be a little I button pops up over here. I think it already did. That will link you directly to this video, too. Oh, you got options. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, Rick Ross or Big. Uh. Anyway, uh, let's do this. So sketch the graph. Step one, write your givens. Periodic wave has a frequency of... 0.5 hertz. So if we come over here, frequency equals 0 0.50 hertz. Okay, I know it kind of hurts to see me write this slow. I know, I know. It hurts to write this slow. Okay, cool. Then an amplitude of 3 meters. Okay, there we go. Come on, come on, come on. Du, du. That's not a degree symbol. That's a zero. There we go. So let's start drawing stuff. So there's your frequency. There's your amplitude. There's your givens. Now, a couple of givens you can realize right away is the period then. You don't necessarily have to do this, but the period is 1 over the frequency. 1 over 0.5, put it in your calculator, is 2 seconds. 2.0 seconds. Now, it's nice to have both the period and the frequency because you'll see how that helps us interpret the wave. So step one, write the given. Step two, draw your amplitude lines. Here we go. Draw them horizontally. Good, I'm going to use my horizontal tool. What this means here is uh, the amplitude, you're going to draw a line straight across the graph at three meters. So you're going to come up to the three meter mark, boom, put a line right across there. Why should I mess it? Just do it. It also goes to negative three. Boom, put a line straight across there, right through Patch's nose. Sorry, Patches. Okay, you got it tough. All right, there's our amplitude lines. Cool, we just did that. Dot or circle the start and end points of each wave. Oh, this is big. I love it. I love it. Let's do it. Watch this. If you don't do this, you're going to make something wrong. And we grade on symmetry. Oh, do we grade on symmetry. So here we go. You can look at it from frequency or you can look at it from period. Period's actually a little easier. This is a time axis. Two seconds, the definition of period was time per cycle, which means this wave takes two seconds to complete one cycle. So you start here, and then it takes one, two seconds to complete a cycle. The cycle's done. The next cycle will be done in one, two seconds. The cycle after that, one, two seconds. The cycle after that, one, two seconds. And the cycle after that, one, two seconds. A little off on that one. Okay, that's where your waves will begin and end. That's a full wave. Now, so we've done this, we've done this. Now, draw the X's or the cross points. Where does your wave cross? Well, if a full wave takes one second, uh, two seconds rather, a half wave takes one second. So your wave's going to cross the axis at one, again at three, again at five, again at seven, again at nine. And again, this, this whole another iteration of this explanation is on the PDF in those videos. So if I'm moving a little fast, go check those out too. All right. Now, keep going with symmetry. Remember, this wave is periodic. Periodic means symmetric. So if a whole wave takes two seconds, well, then every wave takes two seconds. Half wave takes one second. And even better, if we break it into crest and trough, which is really a high point and a low point on the sine curve, that's going to take half second. It has to. So, boom, here's where I go. Now, at the half second point, we're going to be at a crest. Where's that crest? 
right at your amplitude line. That's why you drew your amplitude line. Where's your trough? Boom, right at your amplitude line. Crest in between two and three. Trough in between three and four. Crest in between four and five. Trough in between five and six. Crest in between six and seven. Hear the beat? Yeah, it's hot. All right, anyway. Patches are coming at you. All right, now, so we just did that. Finally, oh, we did the crest and trough. Connect the dots. Done. Now, on my other drawings, you will see, I do nice, curvy, connect the dots. With this, there is no possibility I'm doing a curve on this graph. So what is totally legal, and what I will do right now, partly because it's legal and partly because some of you are going to end up drawing like this because, well, you don't always want to get your art hand on. You can just literally connect these straight line. Boom. Comes through here, down here. Boom. Right up to the, make sure you hit your dots. Oh my goodness, is it important to put your dots here? Because if you hit them, you get credit. If you don't hit them, I mean, they have to be at the right spots too. But if you miss, you lose credit. Now, most test questions will only ask you for one or two cycles. Here, I'm getting crazy. I'm drawing how many cycles I got here. We can count them up. Ooh, two seconds per cycle, and we got 10 seconds. I drew five cycles there, getting hype. Now, if you look at the other videos, you can make these curvy like a sine curve. That's all good. In fact, I usually do that. Just right now, it's not an option. Question 25, I want you to go and look at these to see how to do it. And again, like I'm telling you, choose your, choose your passion right now. Either you really need to know this or maybe not. So if you're one of those really need to know, I'm going to show you sketch away with one-third the amplitude and half the frequency. One-third the amplitude and half the frequency Boom, you're going to need your amplitude lines. One third of three meters is one meter. Come straight across at one and at one. Maybe I'll make that one. I'm going to do it real quick. And you check it out. Tell me what you think. Okay. Boom. Here's our new wave. Right on top. Right on top. Why not? Now they said half the frequency. Half the frequency means 0.25 hertz, which means the period is 1 over 0.25 is 4 seconds. So people might think half the frequency is going to be more. No, no, no. Half the frequency means less frequent, which means more spread out. So now your waves are happening at 0, not at 2, but at 4, 8, and so on. And the cross points are happening at now 2, 6, 10. And then, of course, connect the dots. If you want to go crest trough, so we go crest trough. I mean, honestly, crest trough is, is, a, is a misnomer here. It's really a, an extrema, an extreme point from the oscillation of whatever it is. It could be a longitudinal wave. And then when you connect these, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's do it in purple. This time it will look like this. Boom. Boom. So again, don't get crazy like, I have to be perfect at this. Listen to your teacher. You know yourself. You know what you're doing in your future or what you're, sorry, you know what you're interested in. And if it might bring you down a scientific road, do it. If you're like, listen, man, I'm riding with you, but that's it. Don't get crazy. Don't beat yourself up. By the way, you don't have to start at zero and go to crest for, or go up and then down. You could go down before you go up. Heck, you could start at the high point. All right. So that's going to be it for now. Uh, you're going to see a link to go to the next video. And uh, the next one will take us through the next few pages, get the last few uh, physical quantities in there, starting with wavelength. We're going to do phase, wave speed, and we'll wrap up this beginning part of the unit. Honestly, this is the more boring part of the unit, but it's the vocab, it's the basics, it's the, if you ever are in a conversation about this stuff, you got to know these words. Sweet.